Now over the course of the seasons of his vlogs, Nyset has used a variety of different vlogging setups. He's used setups built around the Canon 1780D. He's also used Sony bodies, as well as a setup built around the Panasonic camera. But no matter what setup he used, he always made damn sure of three things. Good video quality, good audio quality, good usability. So now let's check out what we can do to get that kind of quality and usability out of a Canon EOS M6. <music> Autofocus performance, of course, is of high importance, and the dual pixel autofocus of the M6 will get you great results. It's silent, it's smooth, it's quick, reliable, good in low light, and pretty much anything you could want out of an autofocus system for vlogging. Here's some performance shots that show you what the autofocus system can deliver. Now as far as viewing angle goes, the 15-45 to STMM kit lens the M6 ships with at 45mm, which is what you're looking at right now, it's pretty narrow. It's gonna give you decent bokeh, but if you want to vlog with this lens, you will want to be zoomed out to the 15mm wide end. In terms of full frame equivalent, that's a 24mm, and it's gonna get you a decent viewing angle for most situations, being about selfie distance away from the camera like I am right now. I still consider this to be the most narrow of the wide angles I consider a decent option to vlog with though, and especially if you want to go for the nice dead look, you're gonna have to go wider than this. Now this is what you're getting from the 1122 STMM super wide angle zoom at 22mm, which in terms of full frame equivalent is right around the 35mm. It's perfect for when you want to address your audience on maybe a more serious note, or if you want to get a specific point across taking some of the background out of the image, making yourself and the point you want to get across the source of primary interest. If you want to vlog with this lens though, most of the time you will want to be zoomed out to the 11mm wide. In terms of full frame equivalent, it's right in between a 17 to 18mm and it's as close as possible as you will get to the super wide angle aesthetic you're used to from Nystad's vlogs, given that you stay within the native STMM lens selection. Now if you want to add some Nystad sizzle to your vlogs, definitely referencing the tech that you're using while using it is part of that deal. Like for example, the zoom-ins while shooting that he famously likes to do. Doing it with a 15 to 45, going from 15 all the way up to 45, might have you end up with a framing that's too narrow for your liking. So maybe there's a learning curve involved here for you, because basically you're gonna have to do this over and over and over again until you know what it feels like to go to correct framing just from touching and turning the zoom ring. Now pulling off the same move with the 11 to 22 wide angle zoom is a lot easier because basically you're going from 11 to 22 and the tail end of this lens will get you a decent framing. Then again, all the STMM lenses have very good zoom rings that move and feel great. So even if it's a little more hassle with the 15 to 45, you're still gonna get the hang of it pretty quickly. Now there's two main reasons why every AKM setup nice that ever use always featured external directional wind connected audio. Reason number one being due to the location of the internal mics in most camera bodies, they're very, very susceptible to wind noise. So in a windy situation like this, you're definitely running the risk of ending up with terrible to unusable audio due to wind noise. With the internal mics. So what you're doing is kind of gather a surround profile of the ambience, which when you're vlogging is not what you want. What you do want of course is the aforementioned external directional wind protected audio, because it's going to do a far better job in picking up your voice when you're talking to the camera, addressing your audience, making it louder and clearer. Also, it's going to do a better job in focusing in on it and to some degree excluding surround sounds. Overall, it's just going to be a much nicer experience to listen to your vlog's audio. 
So if you want to hook up external audio to the EOS M6 while maintaining use of the flip-up screen, there's a couple of options you can go for. So here's a quick run-through of my two favorite ones. Now this is option one. It's basically a Cam 5 L bracket. This is where the camera sits. Two mini ball heads and a Rode Video Mic Pro. The two ball heads allow for the mic to sit further back. So even if you're using a dead cat and a super wide angle, nothing will show up on screen. Also, the ball head allows you to quite easily reverse the mic to narrate scenes from behind the camera without much hassle. And another advantage the setup has, you can slide the camera up to the vertical part of the L bracket, making sure the mic check doesn't come undone. However, if form factor is most important to you and you're looking for a solution that doesn't bulk up the setup, I believe this is the way to go. This is simply a lavalier with a directional pickup pattern hooked up to a 3.5mm 3-pole adapter cable that then is hooked up to the camera. This is pretty much as compact as it gets. Also, you can run the setup with a foam windscreen and a little proprietary micro depth cap. Now framing yourself in a shot and pointing at stuff that he famously likes to do to enhance the narrative quality of his vlogs is super easy if you're using the external audio hacks I showed you. Because all of them allow for the use of the flip-up screen. No nice dad vlog would be complete with at least a couple of time lapses. With the M6, you can go old school, just letting the camera roll, or you can use its built in time lapse mode that, although it's working via presets only, will give you decent results. So you can save quite a bit of SD card space, and at the same time, you're gonna get away with a slower computer playing the spec in your editing software. Now, since he switched to the GH5 setup, he's been shooting video at resolutions above Full HD, which is about the only thing the M6 can't pull off. Then again, with shooting 4K, come bigger SD cards and faster computers. Because you're gonna accumulate about four times the data than you would shoot in full HD, and you're gonna need a pretty fast computer to have fluent 4K playback in your editing software, which basically comes down to more expensive equipment in the ecosystem around your camera. So maybe for you, depending on what kind of gear you have at your servers, of course, the M6 not being able to shoot 4K might not be a problem at all. So if you liked the video, if you found it helpful, please make sure to leave a thumbs up, it's greatly appreciated. Any kind of comment or feedback is welcome, and I'll try to answer as quickly as possible. In any case, as always, thank you so much for your time, thank you for watching, and hopefully see you again soon.